man. Uh, how we doing? How we doing? <laughs> oh, such a great way to start this, Miles. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> nothing but <laughs> nothing but words before, of encouragement. Before we click the live button, got Mike goes like, "Hey, goes, do I look good? Am I pretty? Uh, is my hair nice?" And I was like, "Jeez." <laughs> Like, Welcome to another episode of the Nissan Nerd Podcast. I, uh, I, as always, is Miles Hall. With me is Mike D. Hey, everybody. On the ones and twos. So, anyways, we're going to throw down another episode here for you guys today. Yes, yeah. So. You ready yeah. for this, Miles? Yeah. Well, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to party. I'm ready to do this. Um, I, uh, I'm not, I mean, I'm happy. I'm not in the best of moods. Um, <laughs> and, and there's a little bit of an inside story there. Um, yes, there is. For those that are in with us here a little live, um, Mike, my background here in my, my dark dang sex dungeon of my background is not quite as <laughs> fabulous just yet. So I, but I have tons of posters. Me and Mike are both ne are nerd poster kind of and hoarder kind of guys. Mm -hmm. So we always have these fights about Nissan and dots and collectible stuff that we find on, on the interwebs. And we're always like, look what I got. Look what I got. We're always trying to one up each other. Well, we are. Yeah, I'll let you tell the story, Mike. Go ahead. So, so the reason why Miles is being a little salty right now is that if you can look behind me just a little bit, I've got a new poster. I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah. It says here, uh, a roaring good time. But what it is, it's a promotional poster. Mm. Uh, not, I don't expect everybody to know this, but in the late 80s, early 90s, San Antonio was actually the host of multiple races, uh, street races, um, here in the downtown uh, San Antonio area, this was literally a vintage find through eBay, uh, this poster. And, Miles, oh, I, yeah. got a nice, I got a nice little program to, to go with it, matching, yeah, right? I'm, I'm so happy for you. And so case, happy for you. So the reason Miles, Miles is so happy for me is that um, – I think I even mentioned, I even teased this at the last episode, but I told Miles, Miles I told you we we were uh, hanging out together. I said, "Hey man, let no, me tell we, you what we I went bought." To, we went out one night to break up the monotony, and I was like, "You know what? I haven't seen you in a minute. You know, let's get together. Let's go have a, a few drinks, play some pool, mm -hmm. and um, and we start talking about." nerd nissan uh memorabilia and collectible stuff and i was like damn i was like i really had this poster lined up it was like i've been trying to find it you know for a number of years and they come up from time to time but it's mm -hmm. it's usually rare or they're like crazy price that i'm never gonna pay that they are rare they, yep. they, the thing about that poster was that was the first race that i had ever been to in my life mm. was that race that ra raced through the downtown streets of san antonio and the funnier story that on that is me and steve millen actually had a story about that and he goes i raced in that race i was like get out of town that was my first race so there was like you know there was some um a little more build up for me on a reason i should have gotten that poster versus mike not on an emotional level. Versus <laughs> level. Anyway, uh -huh. we start. We're, we're at the bar, and this is a complete true story. I'm yes. at the bar, and and we're just sitting at the bar, joking around. I was like, "Did you find this?" I was like, "Oh, check this out." You and if they're two, a lot of times I'll get Mike one, or Mike will get me one, and then we'll just we'll we'll figure it out at what we owe each other later on. Yeah. But on this one, I was just like, "Dude," I was like, "I've been looking for this poster. It came up on eBay, and some dirty." sob shanked me and i had it on there and he was like oh for real he's like yeah i got that same poster that's so crazy and we start, i literally pull out my ebay um your, your phone with the eBay, app and i put and he pulls out his next to it it's the same damn listing the only two people in the known world that be fighting over the same stupid poster are me and him and it was just Completely coincidental. So we were having a bidding war against each other. Yes. And I'm like, dude, it was just the dumbest thing. It was like the no dumbest friend. thing. Now eBay is worldwide. Anybody in the world could have put their bid on this. However, this these two, both these listings only had two bids. Your bid 
and my bid, and my bid was 50 cents more than your bid. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, man, your tears are so yummy. <laughs> <laughs> Just, oh, God. Anyway, I did not get it. So for those that are out there listening, uh, if you could break into Mike D's home and steal that poster from me, uh, that would be the awesomest. Just kidding. Now, honestly, dude, uh, no, we talked about it. There was another listing. Wasn't there another poster what? listing after the fact? What happened to that one? Did you get it? I got my eye on it right now. Actually, I think uh, some other dude skanked me. Probably your brother. <laughs> some other family member just keeps buying me up to to, to just make break my heart even more. It's well, just like, oh, so. Miles, uh, sorry to tell you, but yes, uh, I do have the other one. Uh, I did win this one. Honestly, Miles, this is for you, though. This is a gift. I'm oh, giving you a oh, gift, Mr. Hall. What's up? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. You're just going to give it to me, and it's got, like, it's going to be torn or something <laughs> like that. No, man. <laughs> it's funny you say that, though. I did have my brother uh, buy it, put a bid on it because his screen name is different than my screen name, and I didn't want to give it away because I knew you were looking at it. But <laughs> I, uh, I, I outbid you on that one as well. But, however, this is for you, sir. Uh, next time I see you, you were, you were bidding against me to give me my same damn poster that I was yes. trying to buy. Well, here's the funny part is that I knew I had to win that bid because if I did not win that bid, then I was just being an asshole and making you jack up the price on your own poster. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like, yeah, it was is either like be a hero or be a, you know, a complete douche about it. Oh, so well, I that was very nice of you, Mike. I really appreciate that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I won a poster uh, for competing against myself. Yeah, who would have thought? But yeah, 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 man. Hey, well, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. I'll have to uh, pay you back with some kind of um, mutual equivalent gift. So there's, thank you. there's always, man. It, again, I'm not keeping tabs or nothing like that. So it's always fun, dude. You've, you've, you've given me gifts here and there. So it's my turn to really pay it forward or return the favor. You know what I mean? So I we, we do that. this from time to time. So yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not so salty. I'm in a great mood. So I cannot wait to put that behind me, man. Awesome, dude. Good, 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 uh, good. Well, we got to cover a lot today in today's episode. Uh, what do we got going on, Mike? We do, uh, Miles. So uh, on this episode, uh, we're going to put into the spotlight a pair of petitions currently in the automotive world, which we think that you should know about and also uh, petition for. Join us in these two. Uh, Miles is actually going to uh, school us as to whether or not to buy back your car when in an accident. That's part of our back alley chat. And then later on, we also have for you news in 60 seconds, a motorsports update, and the latest for the Z Watch here on the Nissan Nerd Podcast. Coming up. Yeah. Oh, the music still never gets old. I guess <laughs> play that at my funeral. <laughs> this, as it sinks into the earth. Just play that. Just, as you go beneath the soil, it's just. <laughs> this is how he wanted Michael just be with his his dark shades and his just full black outfit. Like my, I have mascara for some reason that's running. <laughs> it's, it's running. <laughs> just what is it, mascara? It's what Miles wanted. It's Miles would have wanted, wanted this. Like mascara and just <laughs> and the little veil that kind of goes up. Yeah, that's what he wanted. Like. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> sorry. Not to be so morbid up front, though, but that is a very funny thought. <laughs> I, well, let's move on. Yes, so. yes, Miles, you want to give up? Do you want to give us the uh, salutes, or should I? Yeah. So again, um, you know what? Go for it, Mike. You haven't tried it in a in a, heart, in a hairpin. Go ahead. It's been it. a while. All right, all right. So uh, what we typically like to do in the beginning of every episode is to give a salute for those in the Nissan family. Uh, we wish everyone with us, uh, everyone, every one of you, uh, good health. And uh, also for those that we may have lost along the way, we want to be reminded of them often. So uh, to say salute, we say kanpai. Come by. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the soundboard's Ooh. back, by the way. I know uh, last episode we had some technical difficulties. Not so yeah. much this episode. Well, actually, I think we just paid the bill. That's all it was. You know, <laughs> That's we're, what it we was? were behind, and we just paid. I mean, because we're car guys. You know? Noses. Finally. By your car. That's how you race your car. You better learn that. <laughs> Thank you, Ja Rule. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Poor Ja Rule. You would think that he would come out on anything past F1, uh, uh, you know, Fast and Furious 1, but no. Yeah. Ja Rule's at home, waiting. Nobody's called Ja Rule. They dusted off everybody else except for poor old Ja Rule. Nobody's touching him since the Fire Festival. Poor guy. You know, that'd be. You're right. Ja no, Rule's one no. of them. Also, Leon. What happened to Leon? You remember Leon? Now, I still like uh, Lance and the leather and the snakeskin leather pants. Nobody's bringing that guy back. Uh, that's right. He got shot, but he's not dead. You can't kill you Lance. Not. You can't, kill, can't kill leather pants. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. pants? Is, that, is that the 40 weight? What do you think, Lance? 30 weight? Yeah. 40 weight? Put yeah, in the wrench. Time, that's all I'm going to say. All right, let's go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got to start on this, everybody. Uh, first thing we want to talk about today on the Nissan Nerve podcast is a petition you may have seen this one going around uh previously and i think that works right there yes okay now as an automotive enthusiast this isn't the first time you may have seen this um not only for this particular campaign but just throughout the entire the decades and decades of there's always an ongoing battle between government regulation and this passion that we have with uh, the automotive uh performance uh, emissions is the name of the game. However, currently there is a uh, essentially uh, legislation uh, talks of legislation that uh, it essentially kind of takes away the things that we uh, find so so much fun. You know what I mean? So here is the RPM Act. Uh, this is what's called the Recognizing of Protection of Motorsports Act of 2021. Uh, you can see here on the website, essentially saying, protect your right to race. The EPA is banning race cars. This is the threat. The EPA supposedly wants to ban race cars. Uh, this here is a call to action that says, uh, tell Congress to pass the RPM Act and stop the EPA from destroying motorsports. Uh, you know, your member of Congress needs to hear from all of us uh, to, to, to really get the point driven home. Um, this is, uh, of course, uh, bipartisan here. Let's see. I, I've got a few more notes on this. <laughs> you know, I mean, while you're, while you're perusing through a bunch of boring legal legislative jumbo, talk, yes. jumbo, I'm going to go ahead and just tip in here, but I will say this, you know, I'm not one, I'm usually not a very political person, or at least I don't speak about it openly, but things like this are, are extremely important because, <clears throat> Acts like this wipe out entire car cultures. Um, and, and we may not think about that, but it's something that we have to kind of protect. So definitely get familiarized with the uh, with the with this act, with the RPM mm -hmm. Act, and kind of see if that's going to be something that you want to get on board with with the petition. We we me and Mike we obviously have a stance on this where we're su where we're obviously supporting our freedom to be as loud and obnoxious, especially with Mike's exhaust <laughs> as loud and obnoxious as we can possibly be. Um, you know, Mike, uh, this isn't the first um, thing that I've seen uh, yep. like the RPM act. I think it, you were also seeing this in States um, that are coming down pretty hard. And of course, yes. we usually see this a lot uh, for our California brethren. Um, they are coming down. They, they were the first to co really come down back in the fast and furious <laughs> drop days. Um, and it's always been the police and, and the, the, the tuner culture, yeah. um, especially, I mean, car culture in general, from low riders to uh, car culture uh, to uh, import scene. And they've always kind of fought that battle, unfortunately with the police and who knows if it's chasing tickets or who knows if it's mm -hmm. a situation where, um, you know, there truly is trying to be a movement to take uh, that culture away or, yeah. or to uh, silence it or quiet it. But um, yeah, you know, that's something else that you folks have to consider. I mean, other states yeah. are a lot more lenient. I would say uh, it, me and Mike are uh, here at this time in Texas. We have a lot of leniency. You could pretty much do whatever you want most days. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
But so well, tell me a little bit of. more about the RPM Act. Any more details, Mike? Yes. So uh, this act, this act is a protection act, though. But what the EPA was uh, looking to do essentially is saying that street cars, trucks, motorcycles, they cannot be converted into what they call race cars. Uh, product, the entire automotive aftermarket industry, which is a two billion dollar industry, is being threatened by this legislation. Uh, essentially. The things that we do in the garage uh, to, to to go to autocross, to do the track days, uh, even professional teams for that matter, uh, this legislation is essentially making it outlawed. They're saying that supercharger kits, turbocharger kits, exhaust systems, something as easy or as basic as an exhaust system, even tuning software. That is a big one, tuning software. Uh, this The EPA wants to crack down on that. So that's what this legislation is for, this, uh, letting... Uh, the the uh, the congressmen and women uh, letting them know that uh, that we are let not okay let with let this. Let them hear your voice. We'll say that. Yes. Now, no. throughout throughout the decades, this what this is what I kind of find is uh, this shift is this line between what's legal and not legal is always shifting. Uh, it always seems like it's shifting, uh, not only from state to state, but you know, year by year. We all know that uh, you know. Years from now, within a decade, two decades, th there this this line uh, as for uh, uh, what's legal or not uh, is shifting. However, it really depends on us and th like this petition that really uh, determines where this line is. What kind of compromise are we going to make? Or what kind of compromises are they going to make? Is really the more important question, and that really is dependent on us speaking up. So, uh, to be um, a little bit more specific. Uh, if you go to SEMA.org, of course, we know SEMA is uh, one of the hosts, one of the biggest hosts of aftermarket uh, exhibitions yearly, uh, typically. Uh, they are leading this charge. We'll leave a link to this in the episode notes. And um, if you click literally right here in red, I'm going to do it right <laughs> here. This is a link. It's very, very simple, guys. For those, are, I would literally encourage you guys to do this. Multitask if you can. Uh, go here off to the right. Enter your name, prefix, email, phone number, zip code. The message is already pre-written. You just click on the button. I've already done mine, by the way. You click on the message here, and um, it, it does all the work for you. So it's that simple. And I want to encourage all of you guys uh, who, yeah. who uh, agree with us uh, to, to to make that stand. And you're right, Miles. I typically, I, I'm not a very I'm not very political at all. But it's like when you kind of feel threatened. Uh, about this again because we, we care about it so much yeah. but then also we kind of have this soapbox i, I well, figured just just once to mention yeah to bring it up yeah we live this lifestyle i mean 20 plus years for myself i think same for you and, and a lot of the people that listen to the show i mean we've been uh children that have grown up in it and now we're adults that are Still holding on to that. We'll leave that bag of, uh, of problems all by itself. But nonetheless, you know, you have a voice. You have a passion. You have a culture that you support. You need to utilize your voice. Use your voice. Sign that petition. Get on board and make sure that you're supporting that culture. Otherwise, you're going to be... <laughs> I like so, the, yeah. <laughs> so on that note, I've got another petition for you. Yes, you do. Not, it's not a petition that you would think. All Is it right? serious? So, yeah, exactly. Is it one of the? Uh, uh, are you speaking for your countrymen when you do this petition, Miles? What kind of petition is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a similar type petition. Give me the uh, open it up for me, Mikey. Oh, there you go. Okay. Boom. So for those that don't know, uh, Forza Horizon 5 is actually in production at this time. And a group of Nissan enthusiasts have gotten together to speak their voice. Sound familiar? So uh, gamers are petitioning Forza Horizon 5 to include the Nissan Sudo um, as we wholeheartedly support it. Um, so this actually came through Jalopnik. And for those that aren't familiar with the Sudo, um, this was a, a version of the Nissan Sentra that came out in the uh, late 90s, I think uh, around 92. So they actually um, 
in Mexico, they kept the production up for the Sudo for a number of years. I want to say all the way up until 2016, 2017, and they wow. stopped uh, manufacturing the Nissan Sudo and stopped making it available. But for a vehicle and with a, a model that's almost not changed in that entire um uh, time period, you know, it's got a huge backing. I mean, imagine that many years running with that much production and that much of um, uh, vehicles out there on the road. Um, yeah. There were some good points here in, and it says, that, and these, these are some of the notes that were come on the position and I'm going to read these verbatim. So okay. on the occasion of the launch of the long awaited video game, Forza Horizon 5, which will take place in Mexico, it is requested in the most cordial way if the workers of the respective houses developing the video game can include within their catalog of vehicles the Nissan car model Sudo. This being particularly characteristic of the environment of the streets of Mexico, either as a vehicle that we players can drive or as a vehicle that is part of the landscape, or if possible, potentially both. So the, the petition right now is requesting 35,000 signatures at the time of writing, which it's been a few days since then. Um, it's sitting at 31,000. So close. Which is a, I mean, that's a strong uh, a strong amount of people getting in that. Um, I And this is here, and it's in Spanish here, and, and we'll actually leave the link for this here. But it's called the Petición para que le incluya, incluya el auto Nissan Suru en Forza Horizon 5. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool stuff, man. Nice accent um, for, there, by the way. Uh, I just, I, I've been to Taco Bell too many times. <laughs> Okay. No, but uh, no, uh, for those that don't know, I mean, it, 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 and I would agree, actually, this Jalopnik article, and I love a lot of their stuff, it really does kind of speak to the culture of Mexico, just like uh, a similar vehicle that speaks to the culture of Mexico is the Volkswagen Beetle. They made it for a number of years, and it was uh, a well-known taxi available in Mexico up until, I think, a time when I was in my youth. And um, it, it's just one of those really cool things that you would see. And I, I couldn't agree more. If you're going to launch it in Mexico, let's have some representation of Mexico in there. Um, the last line of the article is something I like. And it was almost mm -hmm. like they were speaking to the uh, um, the Forza folks. And it goes, if Forza Horizon 5 is truly to be faithful to the Mexican car culture, mm -hmm. the pseudo deserves the works. <laughs> this thing needs to be drivable, rendered with a bajillion polygons inside and out, and a fully modeled engine bay. I want to see the pseudo uh, ray traced with an immaculately rendered engine note and the full spread of aftermarket parts and customization options so I can make my own Sudo SER. Dump a few Conics and Lamborghinis from the roster if you have to, but come on, Forza, you got one job. That's that's really cool, though. I mean, you know, before before uh, this, you know, you started talking about this article, the name to uh, Sudo, it reminded me of our episode when we when we spoke with uh, Steve Yeager. You know, he was saying that we were talking about how a lot of the taxis in Mexico are still these the, this model of, of Sentra, and it's like it's kind of like the Volkswagen Bug as well. Like you know how uh, Volkswagen kind of officially stopped making that generation. However, they were still being produced years and years after the fact. In Mexico specifically, so the center kind of felt, kind of had the same life cycle um, in Mexico. Would you would you agree to that? I would agree. Yeah, and you know, for the for the hardcore Sentra fanatics that are out there, and that really follow this model um, and really support it, um, man. You know, there's not a lot of times like you could be one of those poor guys out there that like follows a production uh, Nissan model that came out for let's call it a six year run and it mm -hmm. came out and then you're struggling to find parts and it just gets that window of part availability and new in boxes on eBay and the old, new old stock NOS. It just gets smaller and smaller yeah. and smaller, finding old rubber, finding old glass. But one thing I did look into with this model. Mm hmm. 
Um, and I and I did this about two years ago, and it still kind of holds true today. That you, if you're like one of those fans, and you're just like, dude, I just want one of these cars. Yeah. Like you can actually, or I have one of these cars, and I'm trying to maintain it. The part availability is still out there because the aftermarket support, what we call um, um, like Kappa parts, like fenders, hoods, mm -hmm. um, crash parts, body shop, um. Um, body shops typically order these type of things. Um, they're still readily available. The, the the production on that stuff hasn't quite dwindled and cut off completely, but mm -hmm. you can still get a lot of the plastic pieces that are going to be the first things to go, your rubbers, your trims. For those out there, buy them while you can because you – I mean, I'm not talking anything new that you don't know. You know, get in there and get it. But if you don't have a center and you want to think about picking one up, this is what – especially in Texas, go yeah. down there down in mexico and people think you're bringing back uh narcotics you're actually bringing back <laughs> no but i just really like the car like well there's hidden <laughs> compartments but they're empty <laughs> <laughs> but still very 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 cool ride i've actually yeah. always loved them um it's one of the, f the first cars that i actually saw on the scene um back when i started getting into the car culture many many moons pre yeah. fast and furious days um, so yeah, I, I've always had a soft spot in my heart for one of these. Maybe the, one of these days I'll pick me, up one. But you know, me, yeah. me, too, me too. Just to say, that was the only Sentra thus far that was two doors. The SER was a two door. Mm -hmm. That much less. I mean, the car hasn't gotten any lighter since then. So you want a, a light two door front wheel drive SER? That's that's the way to go. That generation. I remember sure. those. Uh, and we're just. I'm gonna nerd out for a quick second. But like mm -hmm. the old Sentra, the GXE models that came out back in the '90s, mm -hmm. and you could throw that uh, lockable limited, or you could throw like a 1.5 limited diff in the rear. Ooh. Dude, those things would slay. They would kill. So yep. I don't know. Just uh, throwing that out there, but not to nerd out too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. real quick before we keep going miles we haven't really spent much time with you guys interacting with us online through social media uh we've got a number of comments that have come in since we've started uh let's see what we got here when we were talking about the emissions uh our buddy kevin did say because texas you, know, <laughs> you, you can't control us man yeah <laughs> um a few other ones here regarding the RPM Act. Uh, we did have a few that said done. So thank you, thank you guys for for joining us. Uh, we, we're, if you hadn't heard it of this petition before us, uh, or hadn't signed it before uh, us, thank you for for taking that action. And then regarding your SCR uh, feature, Miles. Oh, nice. Oh, really? Met his wife. Uh, she had the SER. That's why he married her. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Did she lose her race? Is that what happened? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, actually, his wife is very lovely. That's awesome, so. man. At the reef, man. Good, good times. Good times. Hey, you need to get an SER, son. I don't know what you're thinking. So get on there. Get yeah. yourself a new SER. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, moving along, we got to jump into one quarter. <laughs> Reef said one quarter mile at a time. I was like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, uh, moving along, we got news. Um, I say we compact this, Mike, because we got a lot of news to cover. Let's do, do. news in 60 seconds. News. <laughs> All right. You're up. I like it. I like it. All right, man. Yes. I'm gonna time you, and yes. I'm not going to be – we're friends, but I'm not going to give you any leeway here for real. So that's it. All no right. love. Let's see what you got. Let's see, Let's see what I got, got here. <clears throat> all right. All right. All right. And Let's do it. And three, two, one, go. Boom. All right, guys. Thanks for being here. Part of News in 60 Seconds. First article here is regarding the 2022 Nissan Frontier. Uh, it's officially gone into production. Uh, this is the first Nissan Frontier redesign uh, in the last 16 years. So uh, production has begun at the Nissan's Mississippi plants. It has been the home of the Nissan Frontier since 2012. They continue with this new generation. The power plant's all new. You get a 3.8 liter direct injection V6, uh, 310 horsepower, nine speed automatic. That powertrain, that power plant is actually being produced at Nissan's Tennessee plant. I know, Miles, we've spent a few articles in the past uh, talking about this, talking about its release. Now it is actually physically being shipped to dealerships. Very excited about that. I know a lot of, uh, of our Nissan buddies, Frontier fans and uh, off-road, as you can see here. Uh, very excited about this. So 
It is on if you are wanting to frontier. See your local dealership. Boom. All right. That is the most sweet jumps. Go. All right. Moving on. Second article here. The two Americans uh, who had assisted Carlos Gozen with his escape from Japan in uh, December of 2019 have been sentenced to Japanese prison. Uh, Mr. Mike Taylor of No Relation. Oh. Oh. Now, do the, do the soundtrack, uh, the clips, uh, are they, do they include the 60 seconds or does it additional on top of the 60 seconds? I account for everything, Mike. <laughs> okay. Go on. Uh, Mr. Mike Taylor of No Relation and his son, Peter Taylor, uh, were sentenced. Mike got two years in prison. Peter got one year and eight months uh, in Japanese prison. Makes me wonder what kind of uh, difficulties they'll have uh, in prison. I mean, will they walk out, you know, Yakuza members? I don't know. Uh, you know, this could be a good movie. If we follow this saga, maybe this would be something that can be picked up <laughs> in Hollywood. But... Uh, Game over, man. Game over. <laughs> no prison. I'll let you follow up with them in prison. Moving along. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, next article we have here. The next generation GTR will reportedly be pure internal combustion, not a mild hybrid. And also a few other uh, notes regarding the next, the R36 GTR. This comes from bestcarweb.jp. Uh, I've got the article here uh, with translation. Anyway, they're saying here that the next generation GTR would be a heavily reworked version of the R35. Does that sound familiar? It's very similar to what you see with the 370Z, now with the Z Proto. Uh, it seems to be a technique that Nissan specifically, amongst others, are doing to keep costs low but provide some new excitement to those models. Uh, Nissan's top engineer, uh, Kazutoshi Mizuno has recently retired. Uh, he says here that the the R35 end of production date is planned for 2022. The GTR could, very similar to the Nissan Z, skip a year until the R36 comes out. So there could be that one-year gap, kind of how we're experiencing it right now with the 2021 Z. doesn't exist. You, can, might, you might expect that uh, again in 2022. So more to find out, though, but we're looking at um, no hybrids, but just pure power uh, internal combustion. Perfect. Well, <laughs> damn. I'm trying. I got oh, one more. I yes, got one yeah. more. I'll let you slide. Go. I know. I do want to add this in here, Miles. We might, we can possibly go along on this one just a bit. This is regarding the Z Watch. Where's that news? Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Well, anyway. I didn't know you were gonna bust a double, a double. I need more news stuff on me. My apologies. Well, there's. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and go. Go. All right. So the Z Proto is currently at the Chicago Auto Show this week. Uh, you can see here, of course, this is a uh, fan video from the convention center. Um, Currently, that is the current sighting of the Z Proto. Of course, uh, we're looking here at uh, next one here regarding Z Watch. Nissan has officially trademarked the term Fair Lady Z in the U.S., which, of course, up till now, the next model Z car, we don't know exactly what it's going to be called, but because of results of this. Um, there you go. Uh, because, yeah, of this, because of this trademark, it kind of makes you think. Now, are they going to call it the Fair Lady in the U.S.? This would be the first time ever, even though it's been it's been done so since the beginning of the Z car in Japan. So, uh, of course, we do know that not all trademarks find their way into reality. Uh, I know we, we've experienced that in the past. But as part of the patent, as part of the trademark, uh, Nissan does specialize that the Fair Lady name would be used on tie tacks, cuff links, lapel pins, watches, clocks, uh, precious metals uh, at the very least. But this kind of does lead into the idea, like, what's going to happen? I mean, could it could it be called Fair Lady? So that well, is, yeah. Remember we were talking about how uh, Nissan re-upped their, their patent for the lettering for the Z. Remember we yep. said we did that. We covered that, what, five, six, seven episodes back? And um, <laughs> they were talking about that particular Z. So I'm, I'm curious 
It yep. makes sense. They did one and then the other to lock it up, but I don't know. Interesting stuff. You know? It's true. One last one, Miles. I really think you're going to like this one the most. Hit me. Which you're saying that the Nismo edition uh, new Z model will debut in 2022 at the Tokyo Auto Show. It's rumored sure. that the Nismo Rumor. edition, yes, at the Tokyo Auto Show with many upgrades. Now, the Tokyo Auto Show currently right now uh, doesn't have a specific date uh, for that uh, event, primarily due to uh, the pandemic uh, continuing that is in the Japan area. Uh, they are saying, though, that a few features, let's see we got here. Um, they're saying that the Nismo edition could get 20-inch wheels, not uh, base models are getting 19. So you could see a, a Nismo edition with 20s, 20-inch <laughs> wheels. Uh, they're also saying that the, uh, the the Nismo would be used in GT4 competition to compete with cars similar like the Supra. So not only are we seeing this car being Use as part of Super GT, which we had also mentioned in the past. We're also seeing it uh, potentially compete in the GT4 class. Um, and there was one mention here. This may have been at the small uh, at the at the end of it. Of course, we're not. This is the last piece here. You know, we still don't know the exact uh, sale date when the cars will be on the dealerships. However, there was a note though. I did make note of it that the Z sales begin in Japan, March of 2022. That is the rumor. So, uh, if the U S gets it same month, maybe a month after early to, at least right now they're saying early 2022 is when you can probably get your hands on a new, uh, Z car. So, so that is Z watch miles. <laughs> Nice, <laughs> you watch <laughs> Panda Watch. But uh, yeah. you know what's crazy is, um, I was, uh, you know, Donut Media did a really good article, and and uh, you know, people were like, "Is the new Z going to save Nissan?" I was like, "Nissan's not really in the kind of financial situation that some people are leading others to believe." The reality is, this is a sports car, and a sports car is a very finite portion of a of an auto manufacturer's business, unless that's their trade, you know? Mm -hmm. So Nissan's flagship cars are definitely other vehicles, but you know, they put their heart and they're putting their soul into this new Z and they're definitely listening to the consumers and they're definitely listening to the enthusiasts. Cause I know for a fact they're, they're taking all the insights. They're trying to pay homage to the livery and to the heritage of the Z to begin with. Mm -hmm. And you and I have talked about this a million times. We'll talk it till we're blue in the face, but if you're out there and you want to get one, this Z is probably going to be one of those landmark Zs that's going to come out. And uh, I know I'm excited about it. Um, I know a lot of people that are already saving for it. Um, you know, I actually went to go um, pick up some car parts this last weekend. And I uh, I met up with a couple car guys um, while I was driving through uh, – West Tech, uh, Cedar Park, and we just kind of got to, to talking, and they're like, yeah, I'm already saving for the new Z. And I was like, well, we don't even know what the production line's going to know. He goes, I know it's close enough. I yeah. like what I see. So I'm guess, I know it's going to have the engine I want. I know it's got the transmission I want, and I'm going to buy it. So I'm just like, and it's crazy that those three things are exactly what people wanted, but sometimes people are kind of all talk or the market doesn't allow you to do that. Yeah. Um, or, or, you know, the production model comes out and you're just like, ew, you know, like the, I'm not like the new Ford Bronco, like <laughs> what we wanted and what we got were two separate things. But in this yeah. one, it's just like, Hey, I hope you like this. Cause this is pretty damn close to what you're going to get out there. And they're kind of saying that. And I kind of, I, I kind of really, um, I love that. I hate when we get a, a Z production model or a, a production model that comes out and you're just like, it's so weird. And then all of a sudden it drops and you're just like, man, I would have liked it with this or this. I really think this is a crowd pleaser and I'm really excited. Yeah. And I really think that it's going to be a Z that's going to sell very, very well, even in a time as unpredictable yeah. as what we're experiencing right now. So. I think, I think that, you know, let's say 50 years from now, we're going to look back at this time when this car was released Kind of how we look at the, the Z generations we have now. You know, we kind of consider, of course, the first uh, S30 one of these hot cars that always have the the 300 ZX. The 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 uh, Z32 is also one of them. Uh, 370s there. I mean, in terms of you know, every car is lovable, but which ones are the favorites by popular decision? This I think this new uh, Z generation is definitely going to be one of those that are going to be more of the top shelf uh, generations as opposed to others. So. Excited, very excited for it. 
Uh, yeah, wild. same here. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about it. So, um, yeah, um, that was news to cover. Um, we are going to be moving into uh, motorsports at this time. We're going to give you a quick little review real, of what is going down. Real quick. And there is, yeah, go ahead. My bad, my bad. This is a few comments from online. I wanted to get some really good comments here uh, regarding. Do you, care, uh, you care about what our fans think now? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just to mention real quick, though, Kevin did say I have a really good point, though. Hopefully they don't end up like the Corvette C8 owners waiting on their cars oh, super long lead times. Yeah. Hopefully Nissan delivers on that. Can uh, really um, – uh, but, but do we really feel bad for Corvette owners? <laughs> <laughs> we got our buddy, of course, Mike, saying that uh, really curious to see what the Nismo version looks like. Of course, we have these – these renderings, but uh, what the production version is, very, very curious. So we got a lot of excited people uh, ready for this. So my mistake, Miles, go ahead. Let's get into motorsports. <laughs> All right. Going down the line on motorsports, we are going to talk about Super GT. Um, just, you know, going back just a hair, uh, you know, seeing the new Z in the um, you know, coming out in Super GT, either in the 300 or the 500 class, or the GT4, as we sometimes call it, in the 500 class. Man, that'd be super interesting and super cool to see um, that production. It, it did happen when the 350Z came out. Man, when um, when that stuff was dropping in uh, um, JGDC, I mean, those cars are legendary, and they're beautifully done, and they were competing, and they were destroying. So to see the new Z coming out with Nissan starting to back the motorsports, at least at certain aspects, and they've always backed up um, Super GT. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be super excited to see the, the new Z model on the GT. But going back to it, let's talk about what's happening in the world of GT at this time. Uh, give me the steering wheel, Mikey's. Hold on. It's the second time with Mikey. I don't, you've never called me Mikey, I swear to God. <laughs> you bought me a poster, and I love you now. So there you go. <laughs> That's how you know. All right. All now, right. So I'm, hold on. I want to just I want to hear this one little sound. Okay. Boom. Oh, look at that, Mike. Ooh. Not, not that, but... And uh, so this is round four at uh, Moteji. Um, for those that don't remember, round three had to be skipped due to some COVID um, uh, stringencies that got to put, put into place. So round three has been skipped and going to be moved into a place at a later date. So round four actually just uh, went off this last weekend. Um, there is the man himself, the Calsonic legend. But uh, yeah, it was actually a pretty fun, eventful weekend for um, for Nissan and Nismo this week. Um, not the placement that we were really looking for, uh, but still a great, eventful weekend. A lot of good racing. Um, I truly enjoyed Super GT this last week. If you get an opportunity, jump on YouTube. A lot of the English translation ones have been done. Um, me personally, I would say go on to the Nissan uh, subscription. Uh, the Nissan page and subscribe. I think that they have a lot of the more coverage that I'm looking to. If you're trying to capture the whole races, you can still do that too as well. There's also the Nissan Mechanic Challenge Live that is the GT300 groups um, that, uh, that show a lot of the coverage. Again, uh, this is what happened this last week. And um, again, this uh, this was a great race. Um, this went down on the 17th and the 18th of last week. And let me share the race results for you. Mike, boo. Meow, meow. <laughs> Got to transition this a little bit smoother for you in the future. Oh, okay. Race results from Super GT, uh, 717, 718. Um, Unfortunately for the GT500 series, um, Stanley NSX ended up taking first on this one. Super coming in on second and third. It's kind of been a repeater here um, with the race results as of late. But um, Nissan, a little bit down the line, uh, did end up coming in with a few points. Craft Sports Motul GTR uh, came in in sixth. And then it looked like we also had the Motul Alltech GTR coming in around ninth. Calsonic Impul GTR, they came in at 11. Wasn't uh, too pleased about that. That's my team. Realized team, also a, a, a great 
team, uh, they came in at 12. So it wasn't the best day for the 500 classes, but it's very competitive at that level. So let's talk a little bit about the GT300. Um, in the last year, Nissan dominated with the GT300 class, um, especially with the, um, the, the Nissan Mechanic uh, College, who actually won last year in the GT300. Um, moving on this year, unfortunately, the first place who ended up going to the uh, the Lotus group of Avoria. Um, but the Gainer uh, GTR team uh, ended up taking uh, second place um, and laying that down. The Super GTR ended up coming in third with, um, and then we have, let me see, next down my line was, there was one more that I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> mm-hmm. The Gainer, uh, the other Gainer uh, production vehicle, uh, that ended up coming in in a, in a lower position in 13. But again, uh, great racing, very competitive. This was round four uh, at Moteji. Round three is coming up on 821 in Suzuka at the Suzuka circuit. Um, so for those that don't know, we will always list those or at least list the results at the Nissan Nerd uh, podcast homepage. Continue to follow this, subscribe. Great racing, great coverage. Um, and a few days later, after they release the Japanese versions, you're typically going to have the English dub ones. So just kind of keep mm-hmm. on the lookout for that if you're looking for the English versions. They are available. Uh, again, we've got a few more races here until the end of the season. We still have, again, that round three to go back through. Round five, six, seven, eight with the final race in Fuji. So that's everything that I got right now for uh, Super GT, Mike. That's awesome, man. I'm uh, uh, excited to see that, man. There is uh, – you're right, though. It's very – I like how you mentioned that, of course, sometimes uh, audio commentary is good and that how you said uh, it isn't until about maybe a day or two later that they get into the English dub uh, versions of those recaps uh, it's a lot of it seems very helpful i think i would uh i mean are, are they are they sign language too because my, my hearing's going away here so I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they've gotten to that level just yet but i'll tell you what the english version uh the dubs that they do um i could see why it takes them a day or two there's a lot to go over a lot of fact checking and uh, when uh, they do put them out i'm pleasantly surprised with and they really do a great job um, let me see here. Bert um, chimed in. He said, uh, I love how Japan still has plenty of grid girls. Uh, we need to bring them back in the U.S. <laughs> For those that don't know, you need to um, understand the entire fanatical world of grid girls. Um, I myself, I can respect it. Were you one? Rather- are you I, saying I you were a good girl? I was never picked. Okay. I, was, uh, I don't pick uh, good girls with mustaches. All right. So yeah, yeah. You're saying. But, uh, You're saying. Yeah. But yeah, no. It's a, he. Man's got a point. Um, you know, very, very cool. I, I love the fact that there's these like little subcultures about all these things in Japan, and the the fanaticism of the uh, of Super GT is is just as as strong as NASCAR as we would see in the states. So it's pretty crazy. If Good you don't analogy. Know, you, yeah. Yeah, you need to get up on your Super GT, be a fan, follow it, because it's it's at the pinnacle of racing uh, for the Japanese uh, uh, race car industry or the Japanese motorsports industry. So Still much to learn, you have. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you got motorsports to cover too as well, right, Mike? Yes, I do. Uh, Miles, so, of course, we know that Nissan is part of the Formula E series uh, with their EDAMS competition uh, team. Uh, I'm going to here to bring you with an update uh, regarding their most recent uh, round here. Of course, we're talking about rounds 10 and 11. This was a double header in the streets of New York. Happened just about a week and a half ago. Uh, Brooklyn and Manhattan streets, uh, those, those streets uh, to be exact. This was the only uh, Formula E uh, track or uh, race in on U.S. soil. So it was very, very exciting for those Hopefully that were fans and maybe in the area, maybe gotten a chance to to check it out though. I'm going to let this video run in the background. Uh, this here is round 10. Uh, uh, let's see here. We got, of course, uh, Sebastian Buemi and Oliver Rowland uh, qualified. Uh, Buemi qualified fifth and Rowland qualified eighth for the start. Real quick, Mazo, I want to point out the first, this first turn of round 10 watch Buemi he's in fifth right off to your left Boom. watch this turn like a boss dude 
He's a, now he's in fourth, right? He's in fourth there. Oh, fighting for fourth. Uh, 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 takes cut, the inside cut, turn cut, to uh, third. Boom. From third to fifth. Sorry, from fifth to third within the first two turns. Sebastian Buemi. Got to give him props for those two turns there. Uh, I'm going to let this run in the background. He would get up the first two turns are like a chicane that just drops you in. And you're just like, oh, guess what? I hope you like bottlenecks because it's your first <laughs> turn. It's well, like, Jesus Christ. Well, you're right. You're right. A lot of these tracks that the uh, Formula E series are on are majority uh, street tracks. So, yes, lots of narrow roads, man. You see a lot of carnage throughout the season. Um, we always well, talk about that for the Nissan E-Dams. I mean, it's yeah. it's heads-up racing. I know a lot of people aren't. You know, it, it's such a crazy comparison to go from Formula 1 to Formula E because – yeah, there's definitely major differences, but the racing is just as competitive if you get into it, if you pay attention. If you really and, uh, pay attention, and there are more, really yeah, and there are more factors to it. Not to not to say that it's better; it's different, and it actually is more interactive with the fans. Of course, we were talking about the attack zones that the drivers have uh, to to charge their batteries and use more energy. Other one is the fan boost, which fans can vote uh, their top. Uh, three or five drivers that, that get the most votes get more energy uh, at a certain point. But aside from the point, let me keep on going here with uh, round 10 and 11 here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run this in the background. Of course, you saw there, Buemi started in fifth, quickly moved up to uh, P3 like a boss. Uh, now, near the end, though, uh, let's see what we got here. Um, uh, later on, though, Rowland uh, did avoid a really good accident, though he, he moved up to fifth. Fifth position uh, at a certain point. Um, essentially near the end here, Buemi finished in P6 and Rowland right behind him in P7. So uh, both teams, very solid finish here in round 10, both bringing points home to Nissan uh, as a constructor. Uh, of course, the next day was round 11. Not as uh, successful, though. Buemi qualified 13th. Rowland qualified 16th. And throughout the race there, though, they uh, finished uh, P15 and P19. So not as solid. Uh, there was um, Buemi actually about halfway past, a uh, little past halfway through the race. Uh, Buemi was essentially uh, nudged in the back. He spun out. Uh, he, he, did, he did lose some position, uh, uh, moved down to, to P12. And I think because of damage that he incurred, during that 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 spin out, uh, he did finish in P15. So so no points for the Nissan team in round 11 though, but a very good round 10. Uh, 15 points for Nissan over the weekend. Nissan have moved up as a constructor up to ninth position, uh, previously in tenth. So that is some progress. So definitely oh, yes. uh, some good news for Nissan. There are four rounds left. Next one's being a double header in London, and that is happening. July 24th and 25th. So that is this weekend, Miles. So uh, we... Hey, Mike, take a, huh? for those that don't know, uh, you know, some people think we're used to kind of one race weekend coming along. Yeah. This year's a little different with COVID and they've been packing. Am I right, Mike? They're still doing the packing the races back to back, right? Um, they are. Explain to, explain to the viewers a little bit about how they're doing that for Nissan Edams. Why it makes them different? Uh, so I think... The reason why they're back to back might be just, of course, the budget of the entire league of a source. You know, they they spent so much time arranging this track. You might as well use it twice. So that's that's one thing. But uh, I think um, uh, the um, the the series is growing. Of course, the budget will be growing though. But um, now, as far as any other reason why they'd be doing that, I mean, I I, I can't yeah. think. No, I just uh, I think it's really cool that they that they're packing that much time. And you and I always talk oh, about, yeah. you know, like the commentators just look strung out because they've not only been doing, you know, the poor guys are just like Fridays, Saturday, Sunday. It's just been like this just nightmare of having to run uh, pre qual, and then they're just and then they're just doing yeah. laps, and then they're just doing the final race, and then the next day it repeats all over again, yeah. and they're just shuffling notes and craziness. So the commentators on this, I have to give it up. Uh, Kudos to them and kudos yeah. to the team. I mean, this is this is a, as Iron Man as you would make it for these racing teams that have to put this stuff on and these drivers. You know, now you you gotta you bring up a good point, Miles. Though because because these races are back to back, 
as a spectator, you're getting a lot for your money. I'll tell you that much because, you know, I know I don't mention it, but there is qualifying sessions. There are also practice sessions for uh, qualifying before each race. So there is a lot happening, uh, not only on the team side, but as, as a spectator, you get to see a lot of action, you know, two days back to back. So if you've got, a, a, you know, a pair of seats and you're there for the weekend, um, I think you're really up for a uh, an eventful weekend for sure. Um, Formula E definitely does the liver. If you're looking for an exciting weekend, uh, I think they, they'll do it for you. Yeah. yeah. And um, so this covers Formula E. I know there's a, uh, a, a race that you and I are starting to um, create a fan base for, uh, at least yeah. here on the show. And we're fans ourselves. But that uh, C- the Centra and the Micah Cup Series um, is still going on in Canada. I know you caught the, uh, the, most, recent ep- uh, the most recent race. Uh, yep. Tell us a little bit about that. So, uh, of course, the Nissan Sentra Cup and the Nissan uh, Micra Cup, yeah, like I said, it's all happening in Japan, uh, very much a grassroots uh, series uh, in, in Canada. Um, so, uh, it's relatively new. Now, of course, it began as just the Micra Cup series, and just this year here in 2021, the Sentra model of Nissan, uh, ha- ha- they've opened up to this series though, but, um, a lot of fun. Uh, honestly, this year we've got, uh, 14 center class teams and 17 teams in the micro class. Um, honestly, uh, for this episode, no new updates uh, on a race. I know last episode we recapped, uh, they're doing, uh, this, 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 uh, this series is also doing something very similar to formula E, which are doing two races back to back. Probably also to save on that track time, you know. <laughs> Makes sense. But Makes sense. It, it does make a lot of sense, though. But uh, rounds one and two uh, happened, uh, I believe, about two weeks ago. Now the next races, uh, rounds three and round four, are coming this coming weekend. Um, if you go to centracup.com, it'll give you more details uh, regarding where uh, to find them, uh, where to go. This next, uh, the location of the next race is here is. Circuit Mont Treblanc, Quebec. I think QC. All right. I think, yeah. Uh, race weekend here says Summer Classic. Um, their social media has been fairly strong. Really good recaps. Uh, their their Facebook page has done some really nice um, driver features. Uh, this is a very like, again saying earlier. This is a very grassroots approach. Very very. If you're even interested in competing in Cup races. This is sort of the avenue that you could go to really get some seat time and get some experience without spending too much money. I mean, uh, essentially, the Centro spec car you can buy from Nissan, uh, I believe, as is ready for this race, which is really, really cool to, to, to see, you know. So, oh. <laughs> so very cool. Uh, we got the race coming up here soon. Obviously, we'll give you some uh, some commentary from it, um, and we'll give yep. you our uh, uh, details and uh, obviously uh, and the results from that. Um, we got to check in with anybody um, on comments. No, let's take a look here. All right, so um, Ion did say regarding that Buemi takeover. Uh, brutal lap, lap one, though. Very, very cool to see. Uh, we go to that. Um, we've got here. Oh, where's the other one? Oh, there you go. Awesome stash miles. Why couldn't you make it as a grid girl? I don't know, man. That, was you're, pretty, you're pretty loyal to the stash, man. It was pretty it was political. <laughs> All right. Well, moving on for our uh, for our final piece of motorsports news. Um, this is something that we wanted to just kind of talk about. Um, we actually have. Uh, we've talked about it maybe once before, but this is a little known uh, race, at least not as well known as we think it deserves, but something yes. called the Nissan Challenge. Now, this actually happens uh, primarily in California from what we gather, um, and we're still kind of getting new to it and understanding everything about it. But if, again, if anybody knows anybody uh, taking part of this, um, this looks like a very uh, fun event. Mike, uh, give me the steering wheel. Where are you at? There you go. Booyakasha. So uh, the Nissan Challenge, actually, from what we can tell, you can primarily find all the details through Facebook. And I think I saw something on either Pinterest or um, 
uh, it wasn't Twitter, uh, but one of those other media sources. We'll have the Facebook link in here. So if you want to find out more details about it, you're more than welcome to. But the Nissan Challenge for 2021, this is the series schedule. Uh, we've been really curious to see some details about it. But this happens um, from what we can tell all around the California area. Um, we got the Button Willow, Big Willow, Streets of Willow. Um, the most recent race that was uh, had just come through was in uh, May. That was May 1st in Chuckwalla Valley. Uh, not familiar with that track, but I'm pretty sure it's cool. Uh, round five is coming up here soon. Obviously, there's some lag time in between that, but 9-11 at Big Willow. That'll be round five for the Nissan Challenge in 2021. We've got round six, seven, and eight. Um, I'm not sure if we have any friends or um, uh, friends or friends of the show that actually attend or do this event, but I'm really curious about getting some details about it. Um, I want to say maybe uh, a friend of ours, Charles Parks, was part of it mm. um, some time back. I'll have to uh, dig into Charles and see if he has any details about that or his experiences from that event. But yeah, um, but it looks like a great event. You know, it's all just meat and potatoes. It's just a fun driver's weekend and they compete for points and ultimately for a, uh, uh, a series uh, championship, which uh, which is pretty cool. I'd like to figure out what their numbers are and um, get yeah. some stories and get some videos from it. So if anybody knows anything about it um, yeah. or has any details or you know anybody that runs this event or has any hand in that, send it to us. We'd love to yes. kind of have them come on the show and talk about it. So it seems cool. It just similar to what we see with the center cup. This is a very grassroots approach to getting some track time to being competitive and it is uh, Nissan specific. So it definitely has some interest on our end. Yes. Like you said, miles, man, if you, if anybody knows any more about it, we'd love to get in contact with those who uh, uh, may be a part of it and maybe we can give it more of a highlight uh, in, in the future. Yeah. yeah, very cool. So that's everything that I've got for motorsports at this time, Mike. Now we need to go into back alley chat. Yes, we um, are. It's been, a minute. it's been a minute. I feel like it's been a minute since we've done one of these. So it has. You know, I'm going to take the reins on this one because you and I had a pretty good conversation about what is a good back alley chat topic. And and I think, you know, let's let's try to make something that's topical. You know, sometimes we poke fun, but let's actually yeah. try to give back a little bit. And we're going to yeah. give you some insight on what to yeah. do in the event of a car accident and say your car is totaled. Now, yeah. are is your car worth buying back? And now well, you mentioned something, Miles. Now, you should say, though, Miles, you have ex extensive experience uh your profession as being in the automotive uh what would you call it collision industry the insurance industry so sure so, uh, so like you have some credibility in this i want to start by by that right all right well i appreciate that and thank you very much oh <laughs> well i just want to make sure it's not just like so <laughs> so so yeah so i you know, for my nine to five, unfortunately, Nissan Nerd podcast does not pay a wage. <laughs> if anything, it takes away from us emotionally and financially. But uh, we, you know, we do it out of love. But love. yeah, my my nine to five is a uh, is an insurance adjuster. Um, so I do look at unfortunately way too many car accidents, way too many accidents um, that I want to see. But I do have some valid experience that I want to kind of lay for you folks in the event that your vehicle is involved in an accident. And um, you're at odds of what you want to do. And you're looking for an actual credible source of knowledge to do that. Guess what? You tuned in on the right podcast today. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So what does it mean when your car is involved in an accident and now the insurance company comes back to tell you that your vehicle is a total? What that means is basically there's more damage than what there is for the value of your vehicle. Now, a lot of things can take away from the detraction of a value of your vehicle, mileage, pre-existing car condition, um, you know, actual car condition. You know, if the car is leaking oil, do you have any cracked windshields? Are the tires bald? Um, are, are, uh, is your lumbar torn at the seat like everybody else uh, getting mm. in and out of most cars, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, all those things are taken into account 
and vary depending on the year. The older the car, usually the less stringent and the less uh, retractions you're going to take away from a car's value. So if you're driving a 1997 and your headliner's coming down, believe it or not, they're not going to ding you as much as, say, you had a 2019 and if the car headliner's coming down. They're going to they're gonna ding you a little bit more on the value. But getting back to it, your, your car is now deemed a total loss. Can't do anything about it. Um, the in insurance company says, hey, this is your totaled vehicle. Now, I'm going to take the uh, I'm going to take the steering wheel here for a second, Mike. Sure, sure. Boom. So this is an example of an accident. Uh, for those at home that aren't looking on a computer, we got a tag on a 370Z in the rear. Total destruction in the rear. Now, a car like this you're probably going to have some structural integrity and you're probably not going to be able to fix something this substantial on your own. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're probably going to want to consider um, releasing that vehicle because it's not going to be a structurally um, safe vehicle after a repair is done. And, and plus you're not going to have that opportunity to repair something at this level to make it safe and roadworthy. Another thing to consider is if you're trying to take a vehicle that was previously in an accident and make it roadworthy, make sure you check with your state regulations on if something like that's allowed and what hoops they make you jump through. Um, yeah. Years ago in Texas, you mm -hmm. could take a vehicle that was banged up a little bit and say, you know what, I'm going to park in my front yard a year later. I'm going to mess with it and make it roadworthy. And you could, yeah. Then I'm going to take it over to the DMV, change my title from it being what here in Texas, we call it a blue title, changing it to a salvage or a, uh, a, a recovered title. Rebuilt. Um, yeah. Rebuilt title. Yeah, if you will. Um, so unfortunately, Texas has tightened up a little bit on that and you have time frames that are in place now. Other states that are... Um, a little more stringent that you have to consider California. They also tighten up on that. The states with uh, heavy fraud opportunities are also going to tighten their belt on that. So just make sure that you kind of go to your local .gov website and check into um, what that would be. A lot of time that information is readily available, for, but that is something you definitely need to take in your, into, into your decision tree for this. So yeah. again, we're going back to the situation where your vehicle is considered a total. Now, if you're going to total your vehicle, there's something called a buyback option. So when I total your vehicle as an insurance adjuster, I'm going to say, hey, and I'm using examples here. Um, I'm taking your uh, 1996 300ZX and I've totaled the vehicle. I've... Uh, there's a value that we've come to assess on this vehicle. Are you trying to keep this vehicle and, and, and ultimately buy it back from the insurance or you're going to let the insurance take it? Uh, in, they call it an insurance retain. Yeah. So two options, you keeping it, insurance keeping it. What do these two differences mean? So if you're keeping the vehicle, you're buying back this, this vehicle back for a certain amount of money. If you ask about that, the insurance should be providing you a value on your vehicle to buy it back. They'll say in its current condition as salvage, as metal, they're going to say your car is worth $600 to buy back. Now, out of the value of that vehicle, they're going to say you can buy your vehicle back for $600. We're going to take that amount away from the, the value that we put on the table, and we're going to give you your car back. And that's mm -hmm. it. We'll have to change the title most likely to show it as a salvage title, but you can have your vehicle for $600 and then here's your settlement. They cut a check and that's the end of it. All right. With the insurance keeping this vehicle, they basically give you the maximum amount they can, but they're going to take your vehicle. Um, well, people are like, well, let's talk about a situation for you and me, Mike. I have custom rims. I have a custom stereo. I have certain aftermarket things underneath the hood that I want to take. Well, yeah. guess what? If you ask the insurance and find out their stance on it, sometimes they'll let you replace some of those aftermarket parts with, with the stock ones, but you have to make sure that they're put back in the same position. So say, for instance, I want to take that aftermarket um, AEM air and cleaner off or i want to take that uh, still in or or z1 air intake system off okay yeah. great take it off but you got to put your oem uh, unit back in there this is why people always ask me like what do you do with your oem stuff why aren't you selling it for 20 dollars on marketplace because <laughs> if my car is ever involved in an accident i want to 
to take that aftermarket and I'll fly it over to the next thing. Yeah. Um, so you just got to get with your, your insurance adjuster, have that conversation if you're planning to buy the vehicle back, or if you want to just take a few parts off and you think you'll be in a good situation where you can walk away. So a lot of things to consider here and, and every situation is very different. So again, yeah. you have the options and you have the right to buy your vehicle back and then you have the opportunity to give it wholeheartedly to the insurance. And if you've got aftermarket parts on that, be upfront uh, with those. Typically, most insurance kind of companies are going to give you an opportunity to go once to remove all your personal belongings and swap out all those parts. Yeah. Um, if you ask nicely and kind of work with them. Um, so most of your major insurance companies will do that. Um, the mm -hmm. other thing, too, is you've got a total vehicle. If you've got an HOA and you're going to park something like this in front of your house, guess what? The Karen Society of your HOA is probably going to have an issue with it. <laughs> it's something else to kind of put on the board and measure. These are all very strong things you want to consider when you're doing um, a pros versus con of retaining the vehicle versus keeping it out. Yeah. So I do want to take some time to answer some questions here, uh, Mike, if anybody has any of those. So... Let's see, uh, let's see here. Uh, some else stuff here. I, I do like how you mentioned there are many. I mean, for those of you that are on social media, feel free to go ahead and dial in any questions that you have. But in the meantime, I do want to mention that how you said, that, of course, uh, cars to people like us can be very sentimental. So we uh, that's where the idea to keep it. One of the ideas to keep it is because it's sentimental or you believe you can rebuild it. Uh, uh, for certain reasons like that. Other one was value. I mean, you, you're right. Let's say you have all those mods on that car, and and like the example you gave with the 300 ZX, 600 bucks. Well, you know, you know that those calipers will sell for 400. You, you can do your own part out. You know, you this you is, sell, like, this you is how Mike hat. does. You sell the doors. Mike will yeah. call me. So Mike calls me with this math all the time, and he's like, "Dude, he goes, there's a car on marketplace that's a total," and he goes, "Let's do the math." And he's like, "I can sell those wheels for two hundred bucks." I can sell. and I was like, "Why are we buying an entire vehicle, Mike?" He goes, "Because I want that car. I want that seat." And I'm just like, "Dude, you're buying an entire car for a seat." And he goes, "Yeah, but you don't understand. This is like this is how addicts talk." By yes. the way, those that yes. don't know, and he's just like, "We'll buy the entire car. I'll keep Guilty. the seat." And then we'll, you can have the wheels and then we'll sell the rest of the car. And then it's just, we have this like burnt out, trashed out car on cinder blocks in front of my house. Yes. Usually. Yeah. So, um, but you know, this is how addicts are. This is how Nissan nerds, <laughs> this is how we are. Um, God, heaven forbid, uh, you know, our wives ever hear this conversation or girlfriends or significant others. Cause guess yep. what? The addiction is real. The addiction you know, is real this all the time. So. But you're right. You're right. I mean, because again, essentially, what clicks in my brain is, all right, hey, you know what? I could, you know, I, yes, I would be heartbroken if my car ever got into an accident and it was totaled. But uh, the other side is like, I'm thinking, okay, hey, you know what? I I can mix. I can still make some money off of this tragedy. You know. <laughs> But <laughs> there, there, always there, with the lemonade, always with the lemonade. always with the lemonade, always with the lemonade for sure. But you did mention two things that people should really consider: having uh, take your time seriously, the amount of time that you're going to have to dedicate if you're going to do some sort of part out or restoration yeah. of a car that's been uh, essentially totaled. Think about your time. Make sure this is the best use of your time. Uh, you don't want to have a car, like you said, in the back of the yard for twelve years. You know, with weighing those hopes and dreams. Options. Yeah, weighing all the options. I see a lot of guys that'll take total vehicles, especially newer ones like 370Zs or 350Zs. They'll get tagged in the rear, or the vehicle will get tagged with hail, or they'll, you know, they'll hit a curb and the, the insurance totals it out. But yeah. guess what? You can go and replace all that suspension yourself if you've got any type of wrench experience. And now you've got yourself a track car, you know, and it does happen. Yes. Like you yes. see a lot of next total vehicles, um, they become, they make their way to become track cars and that's not a bad option too as well but again mm -hmm. it's something to consider the investment of the time to do it into a track car a dedicated track car at that point so yep. something else to kind of consider so second thing with there you mentioned like how you said the risk of hoa make sure you have the right resources and by that i mean do you have a garage do you have the tools you know yeah. get your stuff on a really good plan make sure yeah make sure you uh you can you can hide the hideous frame <laughs> with no now, wheels. Now we're know? talking legalities. Mike's like, all right, how are we going to hide this from the officers? Now it's like, 
Now, now you're bringing the heat down on me, brother. And it's like uh, Sean Buck put a good note in there. He goes, "Is the juice worth the squeeze?" Eh, it's it's a pretty good topic. A reef really? coming in. Uh, nothing to see here, officer. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> I saw one here that was that made me laugh. Here, Kevin says, "Burn it." <laughs> 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 so yeah that's one thing uh one subtopic i wanted to talk about and this is a very sure. it can be a lot of meat on this uh on the on this topic yeah. and we can kind of go over this and this is at the bar we could talk about this for hours or at like yeah, the local could. club meeting in the parking lot but again something else that i want to talk about her subtopic group is value okay so your vehicle is considered a total and i'm going to put this in a very reasonable example and i've seen this happen before all you dotson guys out there you're rocking the dotson 240z's or the s30's 280zx's you got that black and gold to 280zx and you're just like damn it's a vintage like you can't get this car anymore z31 you're rocking that anniversary edition you they're shooting up in prices you're rocking a shiro yeah. guess what they're getting up there in value you know what i mean so but what happens the insurance company says oh it's just an 88 z31 and they throw at you two grand and you're just like whoa 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 slow your roll home slice <laughs> this car is a limited edition it's got low miles or whatever it may be and then that's when you're talking about market surveys market surveys basically gives you the power to present your own comparables when you total a vehicle as an insurance adjuster you're going to put in that vin number and it's going to pull up a vehicle it's going to say hey this is an 88 z31 base yeah. right um it, sometimes it'll give you a specialty a model option sometimes but it's going to do a radius search typically this is how most insurance companies provide their values for vehicles they're going to do a radius search based off of the zip code that that vehicle um gets its mail at so to speak <laughs> so wherever yeah. it's housed at they're going to do the radius search usually by 30 to 50 miles all right it's going to search out from there and grow and grow and grow until it finds three to five hits to give you back your value. That's the magic of us putting a value together for your vehicle. Now, if you have a specialty vehicle, what you wanna do is this. You can write this down, burn this into your brain, but you want to get yourself a comparable vehicle with a VIN attached to it. And, and you're going to have probably a lot of private sellers, but you want to try to find a public seller, like a car dealer that has a, a vehicle matching yours and that has a VIN attached to it. With that in your tool belt, you can put that on the table as a true comparable vehicle. Finding a vehicle from like CarMax or uh, you don't really want to use CarMax, you want to try to find a, um, a non-refinancer. What I mean by that is somebody that doesn't prey on people that have really bad uh, credit and they mark up vehicles like that. So you want to try to find yourself a real dealer that's gold with the VIN number. Yeah that's gold you want to hold that uh, right there as comparable i do that as an as an adjuster every three to six months i'll yeah. do a search and i'll print those and i just kind of have them sitting at the top of my toolbox and i actually have about 12 of them in case my car is ever hit by a drunk driver and i got a total out and i go yeah. through that nightmare situation guess what i'm going to try to get the most that i can for that vehicle um and because the insurance really doesn't care as long as they know they're paying a reasonable they're paying what they owe when as fast as they can yeah so just wanted to give you a little bit of the mindset again some of those little details and those things for comparables will put you in a lot better situation especially if you're rocking a really old classic car like a Datsun s30 um haggerty also uh, if you go to haggerty.com they actually have some really good details on how to um how to prove up the value on your vehicle so Good point, though. I did have a question, Miles, and actually we had a really good question from Mike as well, which was, uh, I'll give you an example, though. You know, perhaps you can get ahead of the curve, which mm -hmm. is, while the car is still in great condition and you're driving it and everything's great, can't mm -hmm. you um, essentially agree with the insurer that says, if this happens, this is how much I want it for it? 
Correct. Is this, is called a, this is called a stated amount policy. Um, okay. Now, what you do is you basically say, hey, I want to insure this vehicle in the event of a total loss of this vehicle. I'm going to go through my own insurance company to get this agreed upon value that we both come up with. So um, like you'll see guys with classic um, Datsun S30 models or yep. the really vintage anniversary ones or my own car. I have a stated amount policy with Me too. Me too. Um, and the reason why is because when my car is told, I don't want to be paid out $4,000 for my um, 1995 uh, 300ZX slick top. <laughs> I have, right? I love that car. I know it's a rare car. They only made a uh, hundred or so in the United States for that particular year, right? That's yep. why I started it out. It's really low miles. But I know as an insurance adjuster, and a, another insurance adjuster is going to do 30 seconds of searching and boom, they're going to try to slide four grand at me. But I'm, I, I've already had a conversation with Haggerty and said, Hey, this is a state amount policy. Yep. I want 12 is what I can sleep yep. with. So they insure you on a premium. They set up a premium for uh, usually it's biannually or annually that you're going to pay this amount in the event yep. they told the vehicle. We're okay with that. Yeah. You might pay a little bit of a raised increased premium. That's your yep. monthly uh, or your, your biannual or your full annual. Uh, but guess what? Now you have that situation. If and some people get into the like, say for instance, you're rear-ended by another person, stopped, right? Some people get into that. I'm going to go through the other insurance company. I'm going to make them pay. Well, guess what? You're going to have a battle on your hands because that other insurance company is going to say, well, yeah, we're going to total your vehicle out, but we're only going to throw out what we think the value is, four or five thousand. Well, I have a stated amount policy with Haggerty. That insurance adjuster is going to tell you you want to go with Haggerty because they're going to total that vehicle out. And then um, Haggerty will subrogate, or uh, they'll put to, they'll they'll bill that insurance company and say, "Hey, we're Haggerty. We want you to pay this amount. We had a stated amount policy. This is how much we paid yeah. out. Let them battle it out. You got your money. Go live your life." That's a good point too, because you're absolutely right. I'll be honest. Like same thing. My right hand drive, uh, three hundred. I've got it set for I think ten at the moment, strictly because I know it's irreplaceable. I mean, it's going to be very, very hard to find another one similar to, and much less right. Do I want to spend the time? Do I want to spend the resources trying to rebuild the thing or search for another one? I'd rather just cash out, start from scratch again. Uh, hopefully, just recover my broken heart and go from there. Yeah. <laughs> so again, for all those classic guys that we've got out there, whether it be a Z, you've got a classic truck, um, you've got um, a, just a classic clean dots and Nissan Infinity. Use these tools, use this advice to your advantage. State and amount policies are great. Haggerty is one of the few companies that are out there that do offer that. We love Haggerty um, for the yep. classic cars. For your daily, sometimes it may not work. Um, they're, they're more of a specialty insurance line. So it's just something to consider about it. And then um, Bert chimed in here with a good question. He goes, I've got uh, 17,000 uh, actual value stated amount policy on my S30. I'm thinking I should up it to 25,000. Now, again, it's all about um, uh, cost versus uh, cost comparisons. So if you kick it up to 25, Bert, they might say, hey, you know what? That premium now doubled. It's all about price points. So just ask them, hey, how much coverage can I get for the least amount? It's, a, it's an average question. You're not going to hurt anybody's feelings, but give your insurance company a call and just say, hey, I feel like my, my vehicle is going up a little bit in value. I'm looking for a little bit more coverage. Um, what do you guys suggest and how can I uh, um, how can I get in a better position with my premium if I need to pay in total out this vehicle? So just something to kind of consider out there. I hope this was helpful for a lot of you guys out there. And uh, if you have questions or you want to want us to give you a little more insight on how things work in the automotive industry in general, um, we usually can dig into that. We got great insights. Mike, for those that don't know, on his day to day, um, he he's a good insight on what's happening with production and how production can mm -hmm. slow down or speed up because you're yep. actually in production of a from a car manufacturer. So I am. Yeah. Yes, yes, you're right. You're right. Good point, Miles. Uh, dude, very very detailed, man. Thank you again. I said in the beginning you were going to school us, sir. You schooled us. That was probably a good. <laughs> 10 to 15 minutes there. Very, very informative. Yes, we did nerd out on that. You specifically nerd out, so congratulations. <laughs> Check out the big brain on Brad. That's you. Mm. Yep, that's you. I try. I try. Just, you know, it's all about paying it forward, right? 
Yes. So you actually had a um, – you sent me something cool the other day, man. I, uh, yeah. You sent me a little um, – uh, I think something for the uh, shut up and take my money type of scenario, if I remember correctly. I did, Miles. You know, I saw this, and, you know, if I was an L series, if I had an old school dot, you know, my fault, I got a, I got an L20, uh, which uh, also applies. So, but it, uh, what I want to show you is essentially a, a modification, a new product for the, uh, at least specifically for the, the Datsun L28. So your first generation Z owners, mm -hmm. uh, I saw this and I literally said, shut up and take my money. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Take my money. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> what <do> you got? <laughs> You're going to like this so much. I'm going to run this video oh. for those who can't see it. Of course, we're looking at in, uh, in, independent throttle bodies, side draft for the Datsun uh inline six however what's cool about it is that it is drive by wire uh essentially computer controlled uh fuel injected i'm gonna let this play on repeat if it will let me there you go honestly man this is retrofitting your intake on a whole new level uh for your old school dots they're really bringing the l series engine into the new age and what i mean by that is that with this type of pro uh, control and this type of programmability, you get a whole new set of features uh, for your Datsun or for, for this engine. Specifically, you're looking at cruise control. You've got a very nice cruise control option. You're looking at launch control. You can actually uh, essentially set a, uh, a, a, a uh, certain engine speed as you dump the clutch, you know what I mean? Uh, you've also got, you know, you think about the 350s and 370s, what they call the uh, the arc features, Launch, where, you, uh, where, yeah. where you get the, the fireballs out the exhaust. You know, with this type of feature, this drive-by-wire, if you have the right tuning, you can do the same thing with an L-Series motor. So I got really, really excited by about this. Uh, this is offered by a company called EFI Hardware. And if you go to EFIHardware.com, they've got a few options. And honestly, this is a company out of Australia. So the numbers you see here, you've got multiple options. You have a race series, a pro street, and then a pro race series. Each of them has, you can see here that they have multiple options. It kind of tells you the difference between each of their models. But uh, the good part, you, you see these numbers, and I understand. You get some sticker shock, right? Uh, $3,604, $3,790. This is, uh, I think, Australian currency. So if you – let's just take this. Uh, we're going to convert this to uh, – Australian dollars. dong? What is the uh, – what is it? Uh, <laughs> right. Pesos? So that's, what is it, like pesos? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to convert All it. Right. Right, of course and, you're gonna uh, convert it. Let's see, thirty-seven. We're, we're gonna nerd out here. It's in our favor, man. That's all I'm saying. Thirty-seven ninety. All, right, no. all right. Okay. Well, twenty-eight hundred bucks, pretty much. Just That's under twenty-eight hundred bucks. It, it's not as uh, steep as you might imagine. Uh, of course, there will be some uh, pretty high shipping charges to get it here in the states. But this looks like a quality set, and I mean, if if you know, I was even thinking. For for my four cylinder L series, like is this possible? What can I do with it? It it, it really got me thinking, and so uh, this is what I wanted to share with you, Miles. Uh, it seems like a no brainer. I mean, if you have the money, God, it just opens you up so many means. options for you. What is it? The Ferris Bueller quote we always do: yes. "If you have the means, it's so choice." Oh, so choice. <laughs> <laughs> take my money. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But yeah, yep. good find, man. Good job. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Ion does say here, uh, launch. He loves the launch idea. So he says here, uh, Kevin says, worth it. So, and I agree. I agree. So, uh, we, very, uh, very cool. Uh, we got to jump into events here. Now, Bert actually was getting a, a little anxious here. He was one of the few guys that keeps asking about all the events that are coming up, especially Zcon. We got a lot of news uh, to go over. And the first up is actually the uh, the next Zcon uh, coming up on August 16th and 21st. Mike, uh, what do we got going on for the uh, for Zcon this year? 
Of course, uh, the 34th annual International Z Car Convention, otherwise known as ZCon, is happening. We are less than a month away, Miles. This is happening mm -hmm. August 16th through the 21st in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Um, of course, uh, previously mentioned, of course, the Z Proto will be at ZCon. So if you've always wanted to look at this uh, beautiful yellow car, it's going to be there on site for us. Uh, multiple uh, special guests happening. Uh, Miles, I know ourselves, we are going to be making a convoy out to Colorado Springs. So for those yeah, who I wouldn't call us, us, I wouldn't call us special guests. We are just uh, oh, yeah. We're not. attending. <laughs> we are not. We are no special guests. But yeah, we, we are not on the roster. We are going to attract less. No people, if anything, negative. We're gonna we're gonna make the attendance of Zcon go down by attending Zcon. Just <laughs> we are we are now, purely spectators for sure. Yeah, we're purely <laughs> spectators this year. So um, August sixteenth, August twenty first, the thirty fourth annual Zcon. Bert had some good questions. He's like, is there anything happening under the radar that we don't know about? So Mike went and said that the the new Z Proto is going to be at the location. I heard this is a rumor that there's a potential that we might see the actual production model of what the new Z is going to actually look like at, at least at this event. But no. again, that's the rumor. I don't know if that's true. Um, so that's one cool thing to actually be a part of, yeah. you know, that's, kind of history in the making um for me i get that i actually get to run into um larry chin um who was part of speed hunters for a really long time yes. huge fan of his a uh, great photographer great journalist um i've been a fan of his for a number of years um so i i get a chance to see him i haven't seen him since super lap battle we got to talk to him for a few yeah. seconds um, super nice guy. He saw he actually signed my coffee book uh, from Speed Hunters. So uh, super cool dude. If you get a chance to check out some of his work, you can check it out through Speed Hunters. Um, I I think he's got a um, couple other pages out there. But great photographer, great motorsports photographer. Follows yeah. stuff for years. Um, there's a, there's other people that are coming down the line. Uh, yes. Um, Peter Brock is supposed to be there uh, this year. Yep. Um, as far as like uh, famous people, that's what I think I have here. I heard that the JDM Legend guys might uh, have an opportunity to make their their rounds up this year. From what I heard, I don't know if Josh will, but I, I know the rest of the gentlemen will. So, anybody, you have anything else, Mike, that you remember that's coming down the pipeline? Yes. Uh, so we've got a, a number of other uh, events happening uh, regarding Zcon specifically, though. Some of these special guests, like you mentioned, uh, there may be more that have yet to be announced. So uh, yeah. I would definitely, uh, I'm keeping my my ear to the ground for you guys if there are more um, uh, more special guests. So we will update you as we get closer. Uh, for you, me and you personally, my uh, Miles, um, I had my Z32. Not exactly going to happen. And, uh, some news, I spun a bearing uh, on my right-hand drive, so we are rocking your slick top, I think. Uh, I think you got some, you just, you got some I like the way you went from, hey, I spun a bearing, by the way, we're taking your car. I'm like, <laughs> dude, what the hell, bro? That's a, you got to warn a brother when you drop some news like that. <laughs> no, no, but I, I get it. Yeah, we'll probably rock my uh, my Z thirty two slick top all the way up there. Should be fun. Yeah. You know, we'll uh, we'll make a, a fun uh, a fun week of it and just drive out of there. We'll uh, probably put together maybe a little baby caravan or something. Put together some of the guys out of Texas, and who knows? We'll just do like a fun little weekend thing of it, man. So um, yeah, Absolutely. maybe we will do so by a round of. Uh, a round of hands or applause. That doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah. Let us know if you want to put together a small caravan. We'll go out of San Antonio and we'll drive through West Texas. Yep. And uh, through the, the desert, make our way up to New Mexico. And then boom into the Springs. So we'll go through the back door, so to speak. Yeah. Of <laughs> 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 if you're in for your okay. the back door, Colorado. You're we might put a caravan together for you guys. We're going straight up to 25, yeah. <laughs> too aggressive, too aggressive. Moving on, moving on. Can we move on, Miles? How about that one? Yes, we'll move on. Uh, I have right, plenty of more events. We're going to breeze through these as quickly as we can. Next one is actually pretty new. This is our second year covering this. Uh, hopefully this year we get some more coverage. Hopefully have an interview uh, down the pipeline for this. This is We're talking about the Rebel Rally. 
Uh, this Rebel Rally is a, a, a trek across uh, the deserts uh, in California and Nevada. Nevada. Uh, what makes this uh, special is that uh, the competitors are all women. This is a all-woman uh, competition, uh, off-roading events. Uh, there are uh, multiple Nissan and Infinities competing in this rally. So we hopefully have some features on that in the coming weeks. Uh, if you go to rebelrally.com, this is what you see here on the site. Uh, you can get some more information, though. But we're talking about 10 days of off-road action. Um, and again, this is sort of a grassroots approach. So literally anybody can who can register for this. Of course, there is a certain amount. Uh, and again, if you go to the website, it'll give you more details on that. But this is happening on October 7th through the 16th. So if there is some interest on this, and even just to be uh, spectating uh, through the internet, I believe they also have a YouTube channel. You can actually see some nice features and updates coming up uh, in October. So we're just under three months away from that. Yeah. We're a bell rally. Last year, if you get a chance, we we actually had an interview set with the with uh, the girl team from the frontier from last year. Yep. And um, uh, the ladies from that were going to come on, but I don't think they anticipated uh, how much work and how much planning and prep and everything that was going on because we were trying to get a hold of them and it just it didn't it didn't work out. So maybe we'll uh, we'll try to reach out to them again and get them on before or after. So. Um, We'll have yeah. to figure it out when uh, when when it makes more sense logically to to have them on. But yeah, thanks uh, uh, thanks to Nissan for the support for the Rebel Rally. I think it's a great cause. I think it's a great event, um, and uh, we're we're excited to uh, to talk about it on the uh, after it's uh, happening and give you the coverage. So I agree. I agree. So. Uh I should say this here. The next couple of events here are also happening in October. October is a, in terms of events, October is a very heavy month when it comes to events because the weather is perfect. I mean, across the board, most of the country, October is really ideal. Uh, this next event I want to mention is Z Nationals happening in the Atlanta area. Uh, Z Nationals hosted by Z1 Motorsports. This is not their first rodeo. They've been hosting this event for well over a decade, dare I say, what, fi over 15 years now? I know they started in the early 2000s. But uh, this year, October 8th and, uh, and uh, October 9th, uh, Z1 will be hosting this event. It is a two-day event. First day is a track day at Road Atlanta. Legendary track. Um, now, track positions, getting yourself on that track, uh, spots go by fast. So if you are interested, I we definitely recommend Go to this site, register for the track as soon as possible. Uh, the second day is a show day. This is at their brand new uh, facility. Uh, car show, uh, vendors, uh, door prizes, this everything happening at their new facility. They're going all out this year. So if, oh, you, yeah. if, you, if you ever wanted to make a Z Nationals, I would this highly recommend year. attending this year. This is the year to do it. So, absolutely. Uh, two day event, though, uh, looking to be a lot of fun. I definitely encourage you guys who are closer on the East Coast area. Hey, if you can make a convoy, make it. Uh, you'll, you definitely uh, will not be disappointed. I can guarantee that. Their lobby's looking really tight. I saw that they yeah. had the Warrior Project Frontier yep. there. I was like, hell yeah, that's super cool, man. So, yeah, again, kudos to, uh, to the Z1 boys. Um, they've always been doing a great job. The Nationals. Are going to be nothing but stellar so i uh, highly recommend that event so i agree i agree uh moving on uh next event we want to talk about is actually a series of events but we're talking about radwood uh for those who don't know what radwood is radwood is a car show that specifies uh in cars manufactured from 1980 to 1999 so it is that rad era that's kind of where the uh the term comes from right so uh radwood is actually happening uh, we're looking here. We've got uh, six uh, different locations across the country. So we we are we have just gotten through the North California event. So the next event actually happens in Chicago in late August. If you go to radwood.com, you can check out the remaining dates. Uh, again, you've got Chicago, Austin, Connecticut, Southern California. Uh, they do put a little asterisk in there saying that dates are subject to change. Uh, personally, Miles, uh, I, you know, I believe you were with us. We've done the uh, Radwood in Austin. This isn't their first time to Austin. They've been here 
uh, at least twice before. It's been a really, really good time. So, uh, yeah. Lots of cars so again. Trying, I think we're gonna. 90s. You and I are probably gonna try to make Radwood this year if uh, if the time allows. But I can't see why it couldn't. Uh, October 9th for Austin, Texas. Right. Um, you know, for those out in SoCal, November twentieth, October twenty third for Greenwich, um, Connecticut. So yeah, man, cool dates. Um, definitely yep. a really cool tour. Um, I, I, you know, uh, we've seen it since its birth. Um, kind of coming around. You still have. You still rock the original shirt. I do. Time. I do. So, yeah. But yeah, a, a great event. Um, you know, a lot of cool cars. Sometimes it can be a little boring to see nothing but Nissan stuff all the time. And <laughs> it's always nice to mix it up and see what other um, things were happening around that time period. Radwood yep. is that plug. So, oh, for sure. Celebrate everything from the 80s, all the uh, Coke addictions and the bad hair and the, <laughs> the, the, the say no to drugs and the vast amount of consumerism and the uh, DARE yeah. program. Oh, yeah. The oh, DARE yeah. program. Oh, yeah. Well, so, and you can see here, this is a picture is just an example. This really becomes more than just a car show. This is a reason to dress up this is an 80s and 90s uh themed party you know you've got you've got the miami vice uh white uh blazer jackets you've got the uh members only uh, jacket the neat yes the, the the neon shades you, you've got all that i mean so this is a really fun time if you can make it at any of these locations definitely look it up radwood.com will tell you where to go all right. Uh, yes, the last one here on the list. We're talking about the JCCS Japanese Classic Car Show, 16th annual. This is a serious car show. I know this is very yeah. much Southern California Japanese car culture, of course, happening uh, October 30th uh, at Marina Green Park, Long Beach, California. Uh, major, major uh, sponsors, Nissan included. But yes, the caliber of these builds and the caliper of these cars is just top level. Uh, yeah, everything I, I've seen. I, I've, I've been there once before and I, I got to check it out when it was in the, uh, the just outside in the shadow of the queen Mary, which is a, a famous boat uh, there in the port at long beach. And, um, I couldn't say enough about it, man. Uh, I really enjoyed myself. Um, I got to check it out. I think when we did a Z-Con, I stayed, either I was there early or I stayed, stuck around a little bit later. But the um, the Long Beach um, venue is perfect. The weather was great. Um, the amount of participation that comes out to see it and the, the vast amount of cars that come and, and that actually have – that aren't like ratted out cars. I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's upper echelon. Definitely. So uh, for those that really are into the more classic stuff, not really your slammed week fest type of stuff, um, which there's nothing wrong with that, but these are just, uh, just well executed cars for the most part. In my opinion, you're going to see a lot of that at the Japanese classic car show. So if you get a chance, Definitely go. Like Bert said, go if you can. We highly recommend. If you have the means, it's so choice. <laughs> Absolutely right, Miles. This is one of them. This is this is on my bucket list. Maybe not this year. However, uh, this was actually July. This is oh wait, um, October thirtieth though. Maybe not this year that uh we get to go or I get to go. But uh, in the future, this is one of the events that I really hope to make in the future. Just because, yes, the its reputation uh, precedes itself uh, in, in my eyes, you know. Yep, yep. I, uh, oh, yeah. I have a secret lust for RX-7s, uh, FCs and FDs, mostly FDs. But, mm -hmm. you know, great car. I, I won't I, – I don't – Nobody stab me to death while I'm walking out to my car tonight. <laughs> right. This but, is the Nissan Nerd podcast, not the RX-7 podcast. I know, Sorry. but I'm just saying I've always had a, like – an affinity for those cars. I would never own one because the tattoo that's across my chest, but uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, definitely uh, um, a, a cool event to see other things that were happening at the time, influence uh, influencers and so forth, uh, cars at the time. Yes. So yeah, uh, again, uh, but moving on. Yeah. That's everything that we're going to cover for events. Um, Mike, we did a lot, man. We ran <sighs> long as hell tonight. We did. We this went probably we in the room hours. This we, is setting we, a record, yeah. This is really is setting a record for being one of our longest. Yes, honestly, without a doubt, this is the longest podcast that we've done. <laughs> this is what live stream does. When you don't have nothing to edit, this is what you get, you know. And this is good, we though. Talk, I mean, 
we just talk and we talk and we talk and we jibber and we jabber and we jabber. It's just like, oh. Again, just clo- for those of you with us online, just close your eyes right now and imagine being in a parking lot. And this is where we are. We're just in a parking lot with the hood <laughs> open and we're just talking about events and we're talking about cars. It's really what this is meant to be, man. This is it, supposed to be yeah. inclusionary. Everybody is having a great time, you know. We um <laughs> somebody asked us, we were we were doing something and we were we were talking to somebody about the about the podcast and they just kept asking us like, "What would you how would you describe yourself?" And I was like I was like, "Damn." I was like, "Well, we had to really think about it." Me and Mike looked at each other and we said, so we're basically in a parking garage, but just take away the parking garage. Now we're in our rooms. We're just too lazy to get to the parking garage. So we're in the comfort of our own homes doing the same stupid conversations we've done for the last 20, 30 years. So, yeah. It and it's just, phenomenal. Yeah. It's, it's phenomenal. It's amazing. So, yeah, yeah, that's how we are. So, we again, uh, we couldn't do this without you guys, without your support. Again, if you have any input, don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Let us know. We want to know about events that are happening in your area, big or small. Um, any life events that are happening out there that are worth talking about on the show, let us know. We love that. We love uh, stories about people. We normally sometimes will feature a car. Let us know if you've got an outstanding car that you want to talk about or send yeah. it to us. We'll we'll talk about it on the show. You know, yeah. me and Mike got plenty of time. Obviously we got two hours to kill. So <laughs> we're now doing them in two hour fits. But yeah. But again, uh, thanks to everybody that's out there. I want to thank uh, all the uh, Nissan nerd uh, yes. nation that's out there uh, supporting us thank now. You. So yeah, we couldn't do it without you guys. We love you guys. And uh, Mike, yeah, I-, I love you too. Now that you bought me a poster. So yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 Next time I'll, I'll hand this off to you, man. I'm sure I'll see you sooner than later, man. So um, <laughs> lots of fun though. Again, for those of you online, again, thank you for being here so much. Uh, for those uh, are hearing us, even after the fact, you can find us as an audio uh, podcast uh it'll be released uh we released the audio version uh we'll, be, we'll do know, the english tomorrow in, in essentially we're doing the dub yeah exactly the day later uh no matter how you find us either it's through facebook youtube or any of one of your favorite podcast networks hit the like button subscribe uh, share subscribe, whatever the button is or, hit yeah. the button uh it yeah. definitely helps subscribe, us support. sign yeah. that rpm petition <laughs> yes and then uh and then but again subscribe pr- um help us promote um the uh the community this is what we're here if we don't have a community that ties us all together in events that tie us all together then we do not have a community so we yeah. do this for you guys so let us know if you have something about that community that you want us to know don't be shy if you got a small event that's out there we want to talk about it we'll promote it we do not yeah. care that's what we're here for we're here yeah. for you we're here for the community so yeah. I want to thank all you guys for being with us tonight. Um, Bert, we'll see you in Colorado. Yep. Um, Ion English dub. You know, <laughs> be nice. Be nice. All right. But I want to thank uh, everybody out there for, uh, again, I couldn't thank you guys enough. Mike, I want to thank you again for the poster. I, yes, sir. Uh, I love you, man. Couldn't do this without you, brother. All right. Same here, man. I've um, had a great times great times but we got to do a goodbye kampai in the meantime put us on in your garage get in your garage build something cool um you know put in the time that's what we're all, it's all about so we love you guys get back to it mike kampai sir kampai everybody with us clink have that clink. uh have that drink there <laughs> mm. oh it's so good it burns going down I'm actually so, cooling off with the water now, man. I finished. Yeah, but, uh, that's right. well, eh. we can't all be uh, we can't all be men with mustaches. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that outro. You ready? Ready? <laughs> <laughs>
if we're going to nerd out on F uh, on Fast and Furious, it's like, well, Ludacris came in and, and, and too Fast, too Furious, and he has been on every, essentially almost every movie after that. Yeah, what happened to the, the, the oh, yeah. did, uh, did, rapper? Did, did Ja Rule's contract, did he get too cocky and, and try to, he got outbid? Like, it's kind of like uh, Iron Man when uh, Terrence Howard got cocky and they replaced him with uh, Don Cheadle, you know? <laughs> it's like... It's true, they did. Yeah, but yeah. Like Don Cheadle. I mean, he's 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 like uh, the Bill Cosby of, uh, of action. <laughs> Wait, oh, bad example. But well, I do love Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle, if you're listening, because he's an avid, avid Nissan Nerd podcast listener. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we love, yeah, we love you. All right. Um, so, yep. yeah, from there. Last thing, last thing about the Fast and Furious, the, specifically the first one. It's so crazy how polarizing that movie is because we all love it, but we also quote it in satire so often. It's, we're not making fun of it, no. but again, we kind of are. You know, well, we, we have no choice because it was so outspoken. Like it was so so completely left field that you're just like. Why did yeah. the floatboard fall out of the car? Yes. You know, like, why did it, why? That made no sense. Why is the manifold back talk? Why is the computer back talking me? It makes no sense. Like, it just do your job until you break. Like, just, yeah. I don't need to go. Yeah, no, we don't, we don't do all that stuff. Anyway, just, see, this is about the time when the owner of the business, wherever the car parking lot show is, comes out and yeah. he's like, for real, just go home. Just go <laughs> this, home. This is the third time already. I've asked you nicely. You need to leave the, gr- goes, the parking lot. I literally went. I shut this business down. I went home, had eight hours of sleep, came back to the business. You guys are still here in my parking lot <laughs> talking about cars. It's like, yeah, yeah go home. And then we're just like, hey, and I get, hey. Lay off, get off our back, man. You know, what... <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me how to live my life. All right. Bye. I'm All leaving. Right. Later, guys. We'll see you again.